Dundalk out of the title race. There's no way they're going to come back. I mean, this it'd be the most unbelievable thing to ever happen in football ever if Dundalk came back now and put up a title challenge. But if they don't get a manager in, you just can't see anything changing because there seems to be... And the, the problem is now, is a new manager comes in, he, he's, he's with the players that he has, and he has to be a really, really good man-manager, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does, because I think we've seen... Um, it's a fair assessment now, you know, we, we, we've been through one fixture, we're going to get a feel of who's performing, who's not performing, and I think that it's safe to say the recruitment, some of the last people are in, just aren't up to scratch at all. Um, it's just been some poor performances, so that's so. No matter who does, who comes into that role, you know, like you said, that's what that's that's the the, the hand he's been dealt, and that's what he has to play with. It's going to take a while for this new manager, whether it be David Healy or whoever it may be, it's going to take a while for him to come in and put his own stamp on that team. So the lads he has there at the moment, yeah, that the European football is, is that even realistic at this stage? It's hard to tell, you know. Uh, and at this stage, Nathan, just on that, everyone keeps talking about. They have a great squad. They just need to get them gelling together. Does he, if David Healy, say, does come in, does he have a good, good squad? Does he have a great squad that he's going to actually be able to produce stuff? Or is there something missing? There's good players there, right? Yeah. Um, there's definitely something missing from what was there a couple of years ago. There's a real lack of leadership, which is, which is strange to say. Was like, Especially now, we you know, with, with Chris Shields out and Vine Gartland now, Gary Rogers gone. Real lack of leadership there, you know. Um, unlucky with injuries up in the forward end of the pitch too, where Hoban and um, and Dave McMillan now injured, you know. So they've been unlucky in that aspect. But like I said, the recruitment, the lads he brought in, some of them just have just not up to par whatsoever, you know. And that's not going to change. It doesn't matter who, who the manager comes in. The ability isn't there. The ability, it's, it's just not there, you know. So while I, I, I do, I'd go along, I, I'd go along with the fact that I do think they have a good squad, and and when, when it's everyone's fully fit, they have decent strength and depth. But yeah, it's going to take a while, you know. It really is, and it might not be net next year either because the, the certain players there just not up to scratch, and they're, they're going to need to be moved on. Yeah, and it just shows you what everything that Shamrock Rovers have been doing, yeah. albeit that the money sticks around. Because if the money doesn't stick around, then they could crumble as well. But. From what they've done with their their youth set up and the players that are coming in, and I mean, we'll talk about more about uh, Richie Tell now in a minute. But everything seems to be well thought out. Where you can't say that with Dundalk at all. No, it's not, and I think it goes back to what we said at the start of the season. Where we said, included, we were all talking about the uncertainty on the pitch with a lot of the new signings, but yeah. there was a lot of uncertainty off the field too, you know, this is the Dundalk team that usually acts with the COO and the general manager in the club, and that wasn't the case coming into this season, so there's a lot of, we just talked about the leadership on the pitch, which you could say that about the off the field uh, antics too, you know, and the managerial change is so fresh into the season, it really shaped things up, so the uncertainty hasn't gone away, and it's probably actually grown as the season has gone on. And that's going to remain the fact, and, and probably going to remain the fact, even if a new manager comes in, you know, it's, it's going to take it take a, a while. And going back to your Shamrock Rovers point, you know, you, put, you do have to give credit there, because as now, well, looking how well they're playing, we tend to forget that, you know, people were called by Stephen Bradley's head uh, mm. not that long ago in the grand scheme of things, you know, but in fairness, Shamrock Rovers, you know, in, in the past, probably uh, over 10, 15 years ago, they have a reputation for being a revolving door system with, ma with managers, but... He stood by the man and he obviously seen something in him and the, the, the work that's going on in the force team and in the youth structure and everything around the club is fantastic to see. And they're really reaping the rewards in there, weren't they? Some of the young lads coming through at Rovers, we, we talk about the strength and depth. And like you said, we mentioned Richie Town in, in a minute now, but some of the younger guys coming through, you know, there's some, some decent lads here that they're set up um, with some good homegrown talent as well. <laughs> Thank you.